Please turn to page 200 in your Black New Century hymnal and join me as we sing the prayer. Alas, and did my Savior bleed. Jay Duchard, who is our soloist and one of the readers. The other readers include Jerry Byers and uh, Beth Stednicki. We appreciate everything that volunteers do. The first half of the service is going to be joyful. Uh, if you are joining us at home, I hope you can join us soon in person. But just wave your hands and shout Hosanna uh, from home. And those in the pews, if you have your palms, when we're doing the welcome, please, good, good, good. So now, now that we've now practiced, now stand up, please. Turn to those closest to you in the pews, then smile and acknowledge them. the passion which is the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ and at that point I ask you that through the except for the readings through the benediction uh, remain silent and then after the benediction I invite you to go into the uh, founders room on my left your right uh, for coffee hour Follow along with me on the call of worship, please. 
Sing for joy, the master comes. Right out of the holes, he enters in victory. If all shouting stops, the rocks would ring with joy. But there will be some who will not sing or shout. There will be some who will cling to their fear. Be ready to go to the stone, where the king shall be his coming. I will say it in the highest. Amen. gospel reading doesn't mention them, but after two years of the pandemic, it seemed only right to have palms on Palm Sunday. Through the extraordinary generosity of two people who wish to remain anonymous, the palms were donated to the church. When I get to the part of the gospel which says, as Jesus was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen. The entire congregation, all of you, should wave your palms and shout, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven.
After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage in Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it, as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory from God's heaven. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Before we turn our attention to the Passion narrative, we're going to linger for a moment and discuss this backdrop. Jesus had triumphantly come into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. Back in Jesus' day, horses were used for chariots. There were no stirrups. So chariots were used for battle. But once the triumphant king was returning and had won the battle, he no longer needed a chariot, so he rode into his conquered lands on a donkey. Jesus was making a bold statement when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. The scripture this morning from the Gospel of Luke said that the people threw their coats on the ground so this king wouldn't become dirty from the dust. Historically, we don't know whether Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey or not. If he did ride in on a donkey, were there palms? or were there just goats? It doesn't matter. What matters is that the real person, Jesus, went to Jerusalem with his disciples. We know that as fact. The people greeted Jesus as an conquering hero. While in Jerusalem, Jesus celebrated the Passover with his friends. Please now turn to the separate booklet, or er, inside the bulletin, and follow along as J. Ducharme, Beth Stednicki, and Jerry Byers read the Compassion narrative. There are parts for the congregation to say in unison, those are in bold. So when it comes your time, please speak out. Now, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, also known as Passover, drew near, and the chief priests and religious scholars sought a way to kill Jesus, for they feared the people. Then Satan took possession of Judas, who was called Iscariot, one of the twelve. He went to the chief priests and the temple guards to discuss with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. Judas accepted then began to look for the opportune moment to hand Jesus over to them when people were not present. When the day of the feast of the unleavened bread arrived, when the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed, Jesus sent Peter and John out with the instructions, Go and make preparations for us to eat Passover. The disciples asked, Where do you want us to prepare your Passover meal? Jesus answered, when you enter the city, a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him into the house he enters. Say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? The owner will show you a large furnished upper room. Make the preparations there. They went out and found everything as Jesus had told them and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, Jesus took a place at the table with the apostles. Jesus said to them, 
I've longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I tell you, I will not eat it again until everything is fulfilled in the reign of God. Then, taking a cup of wine, Jesus gave thanks and said, Take this and share it among you. I tell you, I will not drink the wine from now on until the reign of God comes. Then Jesus took bread and gave thanks for it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus did the same with the cup after supper and said, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which will be poured out for you. Look, the hand of my betrayer is at this table. With the Son of Man, he will die as God has decided. But how terrible for that man who betrays him. Then they began to argue among themselves as to which of them would do such a deed. Another dispute arose among them about who would be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, Earthly rulers domineer over their people. Those who exercise authority over them are called their benefactors. This must not happen with you. Let the greatest among you be like the youngest. Let the leader among you become the follower. For who is greater? The one who reclines at a meal or the one who serves it? Isn't it the one reclining at the table? Yet here I am among you as the one who serves you. You are the ones who have stood by me faithfully in trials. Just as God has given me dominion, so I give it to you. In my reign, you will eat and drink at my table, and you'll sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon. Simon, Satan has demanded that you be sifted like wheat. But I've prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. You, in turn, must give strength to your sisters and brothers. Peter answered, Teacher, with you I prepared faith imprisonment and even death. Jesus said to them, When I sent you off without purse, traveling bag or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, no nothing. Not in my life. Jesus answered, Now, however, the one who has a purse had better carry it. The same with a traveling bag. And if they don't have a sword, they should sell their cloaks and buy one. For I tell you, what was written in Scripture must be fulfilled in me. The suffering servant was counted among criminals. For whatever refers to me must be fulfilled. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. Jesus answered, That is enough. Then Jesus went out and made his way as usual to the Mount of Olives. The disciples accompanied him. and found them sleeping. 
exhausted with grief. He said to them, Why do you sleep? Wake up and pray that you not be subjected to the trial. While Jesus was still speaking, a crowd suddenly appeared with Judas, one of the twelve, at their head. Judas came over to Jesus to embrace him, but Jesus said, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Those who were around Jesus, realizing what was going to happen, said, Lord, One of them struck the attendant of the high priest, cutting off an ear. Jesus said, Stop! No more of this! Then Jesus touched the attendant's ear and healed it. But to those who had come out against him, the chief priests, the chiefs of the temple guard, and the elders, Jesus said, Why do you come out with a sword and clubs as if I were a robber? I was with you in the temple every day, and you could have laid hands on me at any time you wanted. But this is your hour, the triumph of darkness. They arrested Jesus and led him away, arriving at the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance and sat down in the midst of those who had kindled a fire in the courtyard and were sitting around it. One of the high priest's attendants saw him sitting there at the fire, and she stared at him and said, This one was with Jesus too. But Peter denied it and said, I don't know. A little later, someone else noticed Peter and remarked, You're one of them too. But Peter said, No, I'm not. About an hour later, someone else insisted, Surely this fellow was with them too. He even talks like a Galilean. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Peter said just then, as Peter was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered Jesus saying, before a rooster crows today, you'll deny me three times. Peter went out and wept bitterly. Meanwhile, those who held Jesus in custody were amusing themselves at his expense. They blindfolded and slapped him and then taunted him. And they hurled many other insults at him. At daybreak, the Sanhedrin, which was made up of the elders of the people, the chief priests, and the religious scholars, assembled again. Once they had brought Jesus before the council, they said, Tell us, Jesus replied, If I tell you, you'll not believe me. And if I question you, you won't answer. But from now on, the Chosen One will have your seat at the right hand of the power of God. Then all of them said, Jesus answered, Your own words have said it. They said, What do you do to the Catholic Then the whole assembly arose and led Jesus to Pilate. They began to accuse Jesus by saying, We found this in our nation, opposing the payment of taxes to Caesar, and even claimed to be the Messiah of Then Pilate questioned Jesus. Are you king of the Jews? Jesus answered. You have said it. Then Pilate reported to the chief priests and the crowds. I find no guilt in him. But they insisted. He stirs up the people wherever he teaches, through the whole of Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. On hearing this, Pilate asked whether Jesus was a Galilean, and learning that Jesus was from Herod's jurisdiction, sent Jesus off to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now at the sight of Jesus, Herod was very pleased. From the reports he had heard about Jesus, he had wanted for a long time to see him. Herod hoped to see Jesus perform some miracle. Herod questioned him at great length, but Jesus wouldn't answer. The chief priests and religious scholars stood there, accusing Jesus for everything. So Herod and the soldiers treated Jesus with contempt and ridicule, put a magnificent robe upon him, and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate, who had previously been set against each other, became friends that day. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the ruling class, and the people, 
and said to them, You have brought this person before me as someone who incites people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for any charge against him arising from your allegations. Neither has Herod, for Jesus has been sent back to us. Obviously, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish Jesus, but then I will release him. Pilate was obligated to release one prisoner to the people at festival time. The whole crowd cried out as one. Take it away! We want Barabbas! Barabbas had been in prison for starting a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate wanted to release Jesus, so he addressed them again. But they shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him! Yet a third time Pilate spoke to the crowd. What wrong has this Jesus done? I found nothing that calls for death. Therefore, I'll have him flogged, and then I'll release him. But they demanded that Jesus be crucified, and their shouts increased in volume. Pilate decided that their demand should be met. So he released Barabbas, the one who had been in prison for rioting and murder, and Jesus was handed over to the crowd. together with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Then they divided his garments, rolling dice for them. The people stood there watching. The rulers, however, jeered him and said, He saved others, let him save himself. If he really is the Messiah of God, the Jerusalem. The soldiers also mocked him. They served Jesus sour wine and said, If you are really the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was an inscription above Jesus that read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there beside him insulted Jesus too, saying, Are you really the Messiah? Then save yourself and us. But the other answered the first with their rebuke. Don't you even fear God? We are only paying the price for what we have done. But this one has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your glory. Jesus replied, The truth is, today you will be with me in paradise. It was about noon, and darkness fell on the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the curtain in the sanctuary was torn in two, and Jesus uttered a loud cry and said, Lord, into your hands I commit my spirit. Saying this, Jesus breathed for the last time. Thank you. 
saw this glorified God saying, Surely this one was innocent. When the crowd that had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breasts and weeping. All the acquaintances of Jesus and the women who had come with him from Galilee stood at a distance looking on. Today we shout Hosanna. May this blessed word remain with us in the week ahead. God grant us all to follow faithfully where Christ leads us. And may you all know courage and certainty that God's three-in-one presence will lead you ever closer to the grace that is ours to share. Amen. Amen. 